We are live at Howell Lanes in central New Jersey, and this is the Northeast Conference Women's Bowling Championship on NECfrontrow.com as March Madness comes to the Garden State. Three teams left, one trophy to claim. Well, and fairly with an 85% fill frame in NEC play this year, they were number one in the conference. Laura Branch with a strike. Emma Catone for the Terriers. Off an open frame in round uh, frame two. Right in there. Fans behind us rooting as they have all weekend long. St. Francis has really brought out a terrific set of fans. Kelly with a nine count. 223 to 172. Fairly Dickinson wins the elimination match. Four games to two. Tori Boughton. Freshman out of brick. Has the pocket. Carson was a two-time bowler of the week this year in the NEC. And she really had a strong finish in our opening match today against St. Francis and comes out here with a strike. Will she make a ball change to something more aggressive? Or will she make an angle change? Nardiello trying to get it and does. Kicking out the seven. Brown with the first ball of the game. She strikes. Key shot here for Walsh. She can really turn the tide in Fairley's favor. And she got it. For the triple. So back-to-back -back splits and open frames for Fairley in the fourth and fifth. They've got 95 through five. Lauren Hoffman. Right there. Great shot for Lauren. You see that ball on the eighth board just to the right of the outer hash mark, or as my players call them, the hash browns. Hannon's going to need a strike here to get them into the 220s to win this game for Fairley. Strike percentage of nearly 49% on the season in NEC play. Melanie Hannon does it again. Hannon with the chop, but it won't matter. 217 to 214, Fairley Dickinson wins it. And now there will be one more match. Indeed, it is now do or die. We are down to the elimination match between Fairley Dickinson and Sacred Heart. Amanda, a senior out of Sheldon, New York. Brown, a senior from West Deptford, New Jersey, and she starts it off with a strike for Fairley. Sarah Rhodes staying in the fourth spot up for Sacred Heart. Okay. And she strikes. It's a double for the Pioneers in the third and the fourth, 28 through two. And it looks like they've dropped Nardiello to the anchor spot. Fairly, 114 through six with a strike in the seventh. Sacred Heart sending a player down to the warm-up pair. That would be Casey Smith. And Fairly getting a strike in the eighth from Amy Caruso. We'll see what Hoffman does here. She's going to need a double to get them. And the senior from Monroe Township, New Jersey, has her first strike. Amy Caruso for the Knights, coming off of a second frame spare. She liked that one. Fairly with 38 through two with a strike in the third. The Pioneers hold a 13 pin lead. Oh, no. 
It'll be Lauren Hoffman for the Pioneers and Melanie Hannon for Fairleigh Dickinson. And I was just going to say, Ken, that this is just about the time where you can figure the Knights need a strike and Hannon will get it for them. Amanda Terrell up for Sacred Heart. The senior played it real close to the edge, but has a strike. 59 through three with a strike in the fourth for the Knights. And here's Melanie Hannon. Got it. Did you see that look on her face when she let it go? Now it's up to Lauren Hoffman to put the heat on Fairleigh Dickinson. And she just lit a match. She knew it. She knew it as soon as she let it go. We go to frame number two in an even match. And Morgan Walsh for Fairleigh Dickinson. She gets the tickle at the end of the ball. Sacred Heart has won game six. That's two in a row, and we are tied at three apiece. Amanda Nordiello for the Pioneers, who will shoot in the seventh, after Sacred Heart came up with a spare in the sixth. 86 through five for the Pioneers. Nordiello, she just iced that one. Great shot by Amanda there. Kicking out the seven pin. 107 through six with a strike in the seventh for Sacred Heart. Megan, uh, Morgan Walsh looking for the three pin spare in the seventh frame. Got it. Fairly 131 through six with a spare in the seventh. And once again, we could have a very tight finish, Ken. And a strike for Casey Smith. It's a double for the Pioneers in the seventh and eighth frames. And she really did a nice job jumping into the lineup here. Amy Caruso for Fairley Dickinson in the eighth, working off of a spare in the seventh. And she strikes. 169 for Sacred Heart. Possible. 199, and indeed it is a 199 as Hannon finishes it off with a mark. 199 to 169. Fairleigh Dickinson wins the decisive game seven in the final game as the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights survive a thrilling game seven Baker match in the championship final against the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Let's send it over to Ken and Mike Lepresti. Mike, congratulations on the NEC championship. You're down, they're down three to one and they start coming back. Are you thinking about yesterday? Of course, I'm only human, right? But we, we talked about it last night in our team meeting, you know? And uh, we knew that as the lanes broke down, it was gonna break down into their wheelhouse. So the, really the secret is we had an answer. It's always that we're just gonna match them, that's all. We're just gonna go battle, 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 and hopefully the best team that left standing at the end, and today it was us. So talk about the two seniors, Morgan Brown and Hannon. How clutch were they in this event? Uh, extremely clutch. I mean, Morgan Brown, really, more than what she performed as an athlete, just emotionally and inspiring the group. If you saw every huddle, leading every huddle, getting the kids motivated and keeping them fired up. You know, today we had three matches today, you know, three tough matches, scoring at the best of our ability. It's hard to keep your 
momentum and your emotions under control, but also stay intense. And that was Morgan Brown. Morgan Brown did all that for us. And then, you know, um, uh, uh, Melanie on the bottom. I mean, ha come on. She, this is, she's been doing it all year. Second half of the year, the change in our team is the fact that Melanie emerged as an elite anchor player. Doubles in the tent most of the time when we needed it, you know, and today she proved it again. She, she has proven it, and in fact, Paul said the 10th frame became Hannon time. <laughs> That's, that's great, and uh, I'm not going to tell her that because it may jinx her, but I'll tell you, it's, it's definitely appropriate. Well, congratulations again on the NEC title. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. I'm here with Melanie Hannon. Mel, congratulations on winning another NEC title. Thank you so much. When you guys were battling them and they were coming back from 3-1, to one, was there any doubt in your mind that they were going to come back and... and do what they did yesterday? Uh, well, I knew, I mean, they're such a tough team, and we know what they're capable of from what they did yesterday. So we just knew we had to push even harder and come back since we knew what they were capable of. Throwing your final shots as a senior, did that enter your mind until the match was over? Was that in the back of your head as you were playing? I mean, it's in the back of my head a little bit, but just try to push down, try to make the best shots that I can in the moment, and try to make them the best I can. And you certainly did that. And Morgan Brown, also a senior, she she just did the same thing. T tell me a little bit about her. Oh my God, she's she's such the heart. Such she is the heart of this team. And you know, to see her out here and put everything out here that she possibly could this this last tournament was really really great for her. And to see us like come through with the win. Um, but she's such such a starter for us. She really gets us going. And she was such a huge part of this win. Well, it's such a great way to put an exclamation point on a great career. Congratulations to you, and congratulations to Fairleigh Dickinson for winning the NEC title. And, Paul, I'll turn it back to you.